Hi guys, so thought I'd do a proper update on the pond today. It's been a while. Uh, it's the 3rd of April today and it's the first day I've had all of the covers off. Although it's going to drop down to zero again tonight, so they'll be going back on later. But yeah, thought an update was a bit overdue. Uh, it's really bright and sunny today, so I hope the glare's not too bad. I have got a polarising lens on. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the fish have done absolutely fine over winter. Uh, I've had the shower off for most of the winter. Uh, I turned it back on about a week ago. Uh, that was just to save power, really. But uh, And I did have a problem with one of the pumps as well. But anyway, it's back up now. Um, fish at 16 degrees. They've been sat there for a little while. Sort of starting to up the amount of food that they're having. But yeah, they're uh, looking pretty good. Um, water quality, as you can see, is, is pretty good. Um, sorry, there's so much glare on the water, you can't see loads. I might have to do an, another little clip later on. Yeah, looking forward to getting the season underway. Uh, I'll have a few bits to video going forward. Uh, I've got a new fish or two come in in the not too distant future. Uh, I've got a new auto feeder as well, which I'll do a video on when I get around to setting that up. Uh, I've just got a few sort of spring cleaning jobs to do today. It's probably not going to be a super long update, but um, see how we go. It's just nice to see the fish again, have the covers off. They do seem to have grown quite a bit over the winter, particularly some of the smaller ones, like this kahaku that I got at the end of last year. That, I think that was 26 centimetres when I got it, and that must be not far off 40. All right, let's get on with some jobs. As you can see there's a bit of a bit of muck on the bottom of the pond. Um, one thing I'm going to do, if you remember at the end of last year, I changed my moving bed so I've got this return coming back in. And I'm going to get a little rubber boot on there just to give it a little bit more flow around the pond. Some of the water does come back through an underwater return so there is a little bit of flow but not loads. So much glare today, so bright and sunny. Anyway, let's have a look in the filter shed. Right, so the filter shed is a bomb site as normal. It's my project for this year to actually get it a bit tidier. Um, the moving bed that I sorted in the last season is working fantastic. With 400 litres of media moving in there. Don't know whether you can see it, but there's that stainless steel bit at the back. So some of the water's going through there and some of it's going through an underwater return. Goes down in there. Uh, the air source heat pumps worked faultlessly all winter. It's currently 16.7 degrees. Um, this little DIY shower on the top is working great. I've got filter floss in there, and as you can see, it's still quite caked up with with dirt. And that's obviously after the drum filter and that needs cleaning pretty much every week. The, uh, I'm actually going to be running the pumps at much lower speeds this year. I don't know whether you can actually see the displays on there but we've got 69 watts which is running through the air source heat pump and the moving bed and the, uh, the shower I've turned it right down. It's actually running on 55 watts. And as you saw earlier, it still gets a pretty good flow over it at 55 watts. I'll be honest, I don't know why I ever used to run it at like 170 or whatever I used to have it at. I don't think it needs it. But uh, what I want to do now, obviously clean that filter floss out. I want to give the drum a little bit of a clean. Because the UV has been off all winter, as you can see the screen is pretty dirty. Probably I can't quite see it, probably a load of dirt in there as well. Yeah, there is that side. 
starting to get a little bit of blanket weed, I think. Yeah, it's all looking a little bit gunky in there. So we're going to give that all a clean out. I'll poke you down the front of the chute. I don't know whether there's much dirt in there. Don't know whether you could see anything at all in there, but anyway, let's give that a clean out. I've got this Aquasource drum screen cleaner. Um, don't need to remove the screen, apparently you can just use it as it is. 25 mil with 500 mil of water. Spray it on and wipe it off. You gotta leave it a couple of minutes and then wipe it. So I'll do a, you see how dirty that is now. We'll do a before and after in a second. And there we go, that's after. It's not perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. Uh, I'm gonna rotate the drum around, do the next section. Uh, it literally is just a quick wipe. Uh, but yeah, I'll get that all cleaned up, get the drum cleaned up, then we're good to go. Uh, drum's been absolutely spot on all winter, not had any problems with it at all. It's all running absolutely fine, and as you saw, the water quality is uh, is really good. You know, some waste does pass through the drum. Obviously, you know, as, it, as I'm seeing in the filter floss, but I think that's the same on any filter, really. You know, some things do get through, but, you know, they go around again and they get caught the next time, so it's not really a problem. Anyway, let's get this clean. Uh, it's not perfect, but that's the drum mostly clean. Um, to another thing I have done, I was getting a lot of build-up on the inlet to the drum, the one that's not being used, so I've teed off one of my air pumps and stuck a little air stone down there. Hopefully that will keep it a little bit cleaner. Um, right. So the rest of the pond. I've added a little bit. Oh, I can't see anything because of the little air. Yeah. Nope. Uh, yeah, I've added a little bit of pipe and a cut down rubber elbow on here. Just so the water's coming out and giving me a bit more flow around the pond. That's kind of working how I wanted it to. Because uh, I've got that going in, I've actually decided to turn the air off on the bottom drain. I don't think I really need it. Uh, if I get too much waste building up on the bottom, I might turn it back on, but we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, I might have to cut that down a little bit more because it's kind of shooting it up a little bit. But the water level has dropped a little bit with all my messing about today. The fish are all a little bit freaked out because I've been messing about with stuff but they'll calm down in a bit I'll um, pop back to you later I've clouded up the water a little bit I'll pop back to you later when the sun's starting to go down and it's a bit less bright and having a proper look at the fish well, I'll quickly show you up in the shower as well like I said, I used to run it at 175 watts, and it's now running at just 55. I can get to it without falling in. But I'm still getting a pretty good flow over there, to be honest. I don't know why I used to run it so fast. Maybe I'll turn it up a tiny bit in the height of summer, but to be honest, I think that's more than enough. So yeah, the pond is running at about 120 watts less than it was last year. Which is good on the pocket. I'm going to spend that money on heating. And try and give them a good growing season. We'll sort of slowly build the food up over the next month and then from May I want to really start piling the food in, give them a, a good four months of uh, 20 degrees plus. So another thing I did over the winter is I've actually added a second big blue filter. So in the first one uh, I've got catalytic carbon because I do have chloramine in my water here. 
Uh, and in this second one, uh, I've got bone char carbon. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, bone char carbon is pretty good at, at filtering out heavy metals, apparently. Uh, I've not had a full water test done on my water, but um, I know the water is very hard here. Uh, and I've always suffered from just the odd bit of flashing every now and again. Um, you know, when there's been no parasites and no water problems. Uh, no water problems that I knew about, anyway. Um, but I've always had it pretty much the whole time since I've had the pond. And, you know, since getting this installed, I've just, I've not had any fish flashing anymore. Once I've changed a bit of water through it, um, all the sort of random little odd flashes here and there just totally stopped. Uh, and I'm convinced that's because there must have been some heavy metals, possibly copper or something like that in the water. Uh, so yeah, it definitely seems to have made a difference to the pond, or, or I think it does anyway. Uh, so that's a, an aqua dechlorinate that come from Coastal Koi. Uh, my original one was from there, so I got them to send me a little joining piece there, so they sit nice and neat together. But yeah, pleased with that so far. It does seem to have made a difference. So the glare's off the pond a little bit now, so I'll uh, show you some of the fish. They certainly know it's feeding time, so yeah, we'll give them some feed in a minute. Um, I've thinned my numbers down a little bit over the winter. There's only 14 in there now. I think I had 20 something last year, but definitely looks a little bit better with a, with a few less fish. It should give them a bit of room to grow. Uh, but I'll talk you through a couple of them quickly. So the two oldest fish that I've got, well the two fish I've had the longest anyway, uh, is that heat Siri there and the, the Benny Kikikiru. They're actually both Israeli fish, not not Japanese fish. Um, I've had them since my first pond, but uh, yeah, they're both nice fish, so I don't think they'll be going anywhere soon. They're both about 55 cm. I think that's probably as big as they're going to grow, to be honest. Um, I think they're what they're about five years old now. Um, the next oldest fish that's my Ashiba, which is probably my favourite fish. Uh, so yeah, I've had that since it was about 45 centimetres, something like that. I don't know what it is now, six, 62, 63, it might even be a bit more than that, I'm not sure. Um, so that fish, I did do some videos on it at the time, but it had a uh, it knocked a scale off during spawning on one side and it got all infected. Uh, I did think it might, you know, I might lose it at one point, but it's all fully healed over now and it's, it's kind of coloured up with the brown pattern, so it's a lot less noticeable than it used to be. And, you know, I don't know if any of you remember the, uh, the chag that got stuck in my bottom drain. That's this Ginrin one here around 50 centimeters now and it not last year but the year before so it's just turning sand side this year uh, that spent two months inside the bottom drain pipe work it's just 60 days in there lost a lot of growing time in the middle of that that summer but it's sort of made up for it last year pleased with that uh, the asagi there that's from yagenji uh, that's the cheapest fish in the pond actually that was a, a 35 pound tosai, and again it's now just turning sansai, it's probably 51, 52, might be a bit more, not measured it for a while. Uh, and the only other non-Japanese fish is the uh, Deutz Chagoy, that's from Cuttlebrook Koi Farm. Um, yeah, that's a really nice fish as well. It does seem to knock scales off quite regularly. Um, I don't know. I think it's just something to do with those big Deutz scales. But it always seems to, to heal up fine and they do actually grow back. Yeah, really pleased with that. Uh, two youngest fish. Which is that Kaku there and that shower there. So the shower is a Dainichi shower I bought last year. 
got a bit of a bargain on it because it had a split peck but totally healed now you'd never know so they're both just turning knee high I think the show is probably 45 46 maybe and the Kaku's obviously a little bit smaller but yeah expecting good things from them this year Yeah, a few of the fish, obviously a few too many to go through, but uh, yeah, really happy with how the pond's looking now. I feel like I've got a, a decent collection of fish now. Anyway, let's uh, let's get them some food quickly. Yeah, they're all feeding pretty well. Uh, at the moment they're getting about 120 grams a day. Just sort of slowly starting to bring it up now. Yeah, they're all looking good. At the moment they're on a mix of, uh, it's Takazumi Vital, uh, and I think an own brand food from Coastal Koi. It's actually a, a growth food, but I can't remember the name of it. I had a little bit of it left that I used at the start of last season. Um, before I moved over to Saki Kari, uh, I thought well, I'll just get that all used up. So uh, they've got maybe another week or so of, of that left, and then they'll be switching over to Saki Balance and Colour for the rest of the season. But uh, to be fair to them, the, you know the, the water's looking really good on those foods. The fish are all looking good. You know, water clarity is good. Skin quality on all the fish is good. See where that lost the scale, but that'll all that'll all heal up. Yeah, pleased with how the pond's looking. I've got a new fish to come at some point. Uh, when I do get that, I'll uh, I'll put a video up of that. But until then, I'll uh, see you all on the next one.